Would you feed your dog mystery meat? What about potential carcinogens? You might be thinking, heck no, but as a veterinarian with over a decade of experience, I have seen countless pet parents unknowingly feeding these types of ingredients, which means they might even be in your house right now. So let's talk about the three ingredients you need to look for and why I would never feed them to my pet. But first, if you are ready to take the guesswork out of feeding your pet, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future pet nutrition videos. Okay, first on my list is meat meal. It's not so much the meal portion of this term that I find concerning, it's the term meat. If a pet food company is not identifying what type of meat that is, that means it could pretty much come from any species and that makes the sourcing and quality questionable. These companies could also be using a combination of different proteins or rotating through different proteins based on what's available on the market. And that's a problem because if your pet ever develops a food allergy, which is typically going to be protein based, it's going to be impossible to know what species they've been exposed to. I do typically suggest to avoid foods that contain any type of meals simply because of the way that they're processed. But at the very least, I would suggest avoiding anything with that vague term meat meal. And to help you out, here is a list of food and treats that contain meat meal, or as I otherwise like to call it, mystery meat. Now, before we go any further, I wanna make a really important note that it is crucial you do not choose a pet food solely based on the ingredient list. And this is because pet food companies can heavily manipulate it and actually use it as a marketing tactic. I'll show you a few examples of that in just a few moments, but if you do want more detailed help with choosing a pet food, evaluating ingredient lists, and knowing what is right for your specific pet, I've put together a really short mini course called the Perfect Pet Food Blueprint that walks you step-by-step -step through the process of choosing a high quality and safe safe brand that is appropriate for your pet's unique needs. If that sounds helpful for you, I have linked it in the description so you can check it out below. All right, moving on to number two, BHA. This is a synthetic antioxidant that is added to foods and treats to help keep them fresh longer. And based on what I've seen, BHA is usually included in cheaper, lower quality products. Research has suggested several negative effects of BHA, including carcinogenicity, toxic effects on DNA, and even endocrine and thyroid disruption. Its metabolism can also result in an increased production of something called reactive oxygen species, meaning that instead of acting as an antioxidant, it can actually promote oxidative damage. And oxidative stress caused by reactive oxygen species is strongly linked to cell damage, inflammation, and even cancer. And for anybody interested, I have posted a link to a research paper in the description that covers a full review of these effects. Now, although many studies have suggested the negative effects of BHA, some have actually shown protective effects of BHA. So it is a little bit of a mixed bag. And whether or not you should avoid BHA is a bit controversial. But BHA could be helpful or harmful depending on lots of different factors like the amount included, how it interacts with other chemicals, and even the species or conditions under which it's studied. And we don't have long-term safety studies on the effects of feeding BHA every day, every meal for years on end, which is especially concerning because this is the case for many pets who are fed the same food for life. And that could mean thousands of meals containing BHA over their lifetime. So even though it's included in small amounts, we don't know what the cumulative effect could be over time. Side note, I advocate for rotational feeding and optimized nutrition based on your pet's needs. If this is a video you would find interesting, let me know in the comments. Now, one of the main reasons BHA is added into pet foods and treats, like I mentioned, is to preserve it and to prevent oxidation, which is super important because ingesting rancid fats can speed up the aging process and can even contribute to cancer. That's why antioxidants are absolutely non-negotiable in kibble and supplements such as fish oil, but BHA isn't the only option. There are other alternatives that don't come with the same potential risks. So some better alternatives to look for include vitamin C, vitamin E, and rosemary extract. All right, we're on to number three. So the last thing that I avoid is foods that contain large amounts of legumes like peas, chickpeas, and lentils. Having these in the pet food isn't an immediate cause for concern, but when they make up a large portion of the ingredient list, like in this example, we could run into some issues. Research has suggested that foods containing large amounts of legumes like peas and lentils may impact the bioavailability of certain nutrients that are important for heart health. Also, these types of diets can contain cardiotoxic compounds like cyanide that can directly damage the heart muscle. We definitely need more research on this topic, but for me, it's simply not worth the risk. And on top of that, while legumes do provide a source of protein, they're not as bioavailable as animal proteins are. In other words, animal proteins are more easily digested and absorbed compared to plant proteins. So I wouldn't suggest feeding a diet that has legumes as the primary protein source. And as a quick note, just because an ingredient list has meat listed first, does not mean that it makes up the majority of that diet. Pet food 
companies can do something called ingredient splitting, where they either take one ingredient and split it into different components. For example, peas are split into peas, pea protein, and pea starch, and each of those components will weigh less than all three combined together. This allows them to fall lower on the ingredient list, which must be ordered from heaviest to lightest. And the ingredient list I showed you earlier is a perfect example of this, where they've taken several different types of legumes and also split some of those up into different components. So if you see this type of thing, I would strongly suggest avoiding that diet and instead opting for ones that contain more animal-based proteins and only small amounts of legumes. And be sure to check out that mini course I mentioned if you wanna learn how to uncover more scammy marketing tactics similar to ingredient splitting. All right, there you have it. Three ingredients I would never feed my dog as a veterinarian. If you found this helpful, hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and let me know, did any of this surprise you or maybe you disagree with me on some of these? Let me know in the comments. See you next time.